Dubious Khan, and welcome into the Idiot Box, a showcase of the best, worst, and weirdest that television has to offer. It's the holiday season once again, which of course means our televisions tell us the classic tales of red-nosed reindeers, deliriously happy snowmen that are unconcerned of their impending demise, and of course, red-clad miscreants out to steal Christmas. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. You really are a heel. Oh, I'm sorry, did you think I meant him? No, 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 look, he may have started the tradition of having someone try to steal a major holiday, but for me, when it comes to stealing the unstealable, I have somebody else in mind. Yes, it's the queen of crime, the first lady of larceny, the double-dealing diva with a taste for thievery, Carmen San Diego. More specifically, we're talking about the hit animated series, Where on Earth is Carmen San Diego? Produced by Deke Entertainment, Where on Earth is Carmen Sandiego premiered on February 5th, 1994 on Fox and was almost immediately a runaway hit. While Carmen had already been brought to TV on PBS with the highly successful Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego game show, Where on Earth took things one step further by creating an action-adventure series kids could enjoy, while also sliding some education on everything from geography to history under the audience's noses. The show originally ran from 1994 to 1996, where it was abruptly cancelled after being moved from Saturday morning to a weekday afternoon run. When the show was cancelled, there were actually seven episodes that had remained unaired, and probably never would have seen the light of day in the United States, if it wasn't for the fact that in 1997, a little movie called Titanic hit the theaters. The blockbuster success of Titanic sparked a resurgence in interest in the actual Titanic disaster, so, if you couple that with the fact that one of the unaired episodes actually had the Titanic as a major plot point, well, that convinced Fox to go ahead and air the three-part story, Retribution, in 1998. And the ratings for that three-parter were so good that they decided to go ahead and bring the show back for one more run, this time airing all 40 episodes. However, for our purposes today, we're actually going to take a look at the last episode of Season 3. Not only one of the holiday-themed episodes that this show did, but it's also unique in that this is not your typical Where on Earth is Carmen San Diego story. No, no, no. The basic plotline of a typical Where on Earth episode is as follows. Carmen swipes something impossible to steal, and here's where the writers of this series shine, because unlike the Where in the World series, which plays this for laughs, this series actually goes the extra mile and figures out how Carmen would steal the unstealable. Naturally, there's a cheat here, because the world of Where on Earth give both Carmen and the Acme Detective Agency technology that's slightly more advanced than that of the real world. But I digress. After Carmen has a brief dialogue with the player, an obvious homage to the computer game she originated in, sibling Acme Detective Zack and Ivy are called in on the case with the aid of the Chief, who in this series is a disembodied AI talking head with a manic personality. Think Max Headroom, only not as restrained. Carmen leaves taunting clues, a la the Riddler, indicating where she's going next and occasionally what she's going to steal. Zack and Ivy follow the clues to the next heist, and so on and so forth, until the climax of the episode, where Carmen's master plan is ultimately revealed, and also ultimately foiled. However, in addition to just doing a Christmas episode which focuses on Christmas celebrations from around the world, the writers actually went one step further and decided to go ahead and invert the standard show formula. So, let's prepare for the most larcenous time of the year, as we look at Just Like Old Times. We open at Rockefeller Center in New York City, where Zack and Ivy are taking a break with some skating. Zack, being a proponent of technology can do anything, has been listening to a subliminal skating instruction tape. Ivy, being the more athletic of the two, challenges Zack to put his money where his mouth is, and... Their skating abilities, ah! others only dream ah! Ah! Ivy! Ah! That's nothing. One time when I was skating as a kid, I tripped, fell flat on my face, and took most of the skin off of one side. Thus making me the first member of my family to ever get road rash from ice. Wait a minute. Was that last Christmas when I got into the expired nog? The break is cut short, however, when the chief pops in to announce that Carmen's up to no good in Greenland. Zack and Ivy quickly make use of the C5. Oh, right. I need to explain this. In order for the story to keep moving in a timely fashion, but also not ignore things like, you know, real-world distances between countries, the writers gave Acme an edge in the travel department. The C5 Corridor, which is basically a device that can transport any Acme agent anywhere in the world in a matter of minutes. And while en route, they can bring up information about the location that they're traveling to. 
Story-wise, this helps move the plot along, and is also how the show gets about 80% of its educational content into it. Anyway, Zack and Ivy use the C5 to get to Greenland, which, true to its name this time of year, is more or less Arctic Tundra, and they spot Carmen on top of what appears to be a broadcasting tower. As they climb up, Carmen rappels down and makes a break for it, being followed by two of her nameless henchmen. Zack and Ivy manage to get the snowmobiles from the henchmen, only to find that Carmen has somehow vanished. Ivy! Water! So what, you think she melted? No! But look! Okay, I love this show. Really, I do. But sometimes, some of these scenes with Zack and Ivy, you just kind of, sort of, want to... How the hell did you not notice that cave there? Zack and Ivy head into the cave, where, thanks to Zack's clumsiness, they end up falling flat on their asses. And then Carmen decides to add insult to injury. The judges give you a 5.0 for style. Have I mentioned Carmen's also a Jedi-level smartass in this series? As it turns out, that trickle of water turns into a full-fledged river deeper in the cave where Carmen has a submarine waiting. The detectives try to hitch a ride, but are forced to bail when the sub begins to dive. Zack gets his foot caught in a railing and is pulled under, forcing Ivy to dive in and save him. Where they both die horribly of hypothermia a few minutes later. Merry Christmas! No, actually, Ivy saves Zack and Carmen manages to escape, just in time for her opening cryptic conversation with the player. You got away, but you didn't get the tower, Carmen. You can't always get what you want, player. And then again, maybe you can. Back at Acme HQ, Zack and Ivy try to figure out what Carmen wanted with the tower, and it seems the chief has caught a computer virus. Also, incoming basic education. Whoa, pass with caution. This nose makes wide turns. Anyway, about those transmission towers. Information is sent through them to satellites that orbit Earth. Then it's beamed back to other towers. Telephone calls, weather forecasts, television signals, even back commercials, computers, they all use them back. With no idea why Carmen is at the tower, and also wondering why she didn't leave a clue for them, as per usual, and with no other leads, Zack and Ivy decide to head home for Christmas Eve. But it turns out Carmen's real target is something much bigger than a simple transmission tower. Dag the hall with Zack and Ivy. Pa la 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 la. Whoa, 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 hey, hey, hey! Someone's got their mitts on my microchip. Hey, oh, that tickles. Oh, 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 hey, what's going on here? What? With that link up you created at the radio tower, I was able to piggyback on another signal and bypass Acme's security system. So what are you gonna do with him, Carmen? Steal all of Acme's files? Close down the agency? It's Christmas, boys. I just want to spend it with an old friend playing a world-class game of chess like we did every Christmas Eve before I became a thief. Ah, yes. In case you're wondering what the long-term effect of this series was on the Carmen Sandiego franchise going forward, it manifested in two elements of her backstory that became official in every Carmen Sandiego project going forward from this point. Carmen is an orphan, and it's this series where her backstory changes from her being a former spy to being a former Acme detective. However, it would seem that the transfer from Acme's mainframe to Carmen's didn't work out as it should have, as some of the Chief's memory is corrupted and he doesn't remember Carmen isn't with Acme anymore. But that's only the beginning. Whoa, hey ho, oh, it's Christmas, all right. Know how I know? It's snowing in here. Help! It's more than a memory loss. He's starting to break up. He could be wiped out entirely if I don't... Don't let that happen, Manny. Look out! Incoming education! You cut those burglars down to size, and then had time to take in the sights, and Sweden at Christmas, ho oh, ho, what sights? The beautiful candlelight processions in memory of Santa Lucia, who brought food to the hungry, and ah, oh, oh, <laughs> probably why the Swedes use battery-powered candles these days. And in addition to the education, here's where the show formula does a 180. Wow, incoming clue, incoming clue, done! Quack, quack, quack. A clue? For me? Who in the world are Zack and Ivy? Carmen orders Manny to keep the Chief together. And meanwhile, this show's answered Abbott and Costello, two goons named Mo Skeeter and Lars Vegas, jump in feet first to decode the clue. Eight, Frolika Weihnacht in Carmen, a doorknob plus a metal place setting plus an eyeball and... Looks more like an April Fool's joke than a Christmas clue. Hey, hey Carmen, uh, soldiers carry metal eating kits in their packs that are called mess kits. Maybe that's a mess kit. The clue contains four words. We have mess plus I plus a tongue depressor. Uh, 
or an ah. Uh, a what? Uh... Wait. Mess I ah. Messiah. Jesus is also known as the Messiah, and Christmas is the Christian celebration of Jesus' birthday. Doorknob Messiah? Am I missing something here? Not if that's a handle. And the clue is pointing us to Handel's Messiah. And the only autographed copy of this Christmas musical score is in the British Museum. Yes, Carmen's off to steal the score. Does this seem like a particularly stupid move by a woman who is constantly depicted as one of the smartest people in the world? Yes. But let's not forget that Carmen is also constantly depicted as one of the people with one of the largest egos in the world. Carmen steals the score, but on her way out, she's ambushed by two of Acme's finest from the London office. The detectives give chase, and Carmen crashes through a weak retaining wall and down an open elevator shaft, leading to commercial. But I despise the rampant materialism inherent in this time of year, so let's move on. Naturally, Carmen's prepared for anything and pulls up... Eat your heart out, Mary Poppins! Oh, for crying out loud, she's stealing my jokes now! <sighs> she is good. Leaving London, the chief's condition worsens, as does Carmen's mood because of it. Manny, do something! The chief's losing it completely! I'm trying, Carmen! I'm trying! If you lose him, you'll be gone forever, and that's not what I had in mind for a Christmas surprise, Manny! Manny manages to get the chief stabilized right as Zack and Ivy send in another clue, and this leads to another completely wrong answer from Moe and Lars. Boys, I know what this clue- We're supposed to go to Salem and steal something from this museum. You're flying on the wrong broomstick. The clue is about Christmas. Uh huh? In Italy, children believe a witch named La Befana delivers their presents. La Befana? The story is, La Befana was an old woman who followed the three kings when they were trying to find the Christ child. She became lost, and legend has it, she's still traveling, delivering presents to children on January 6th. Cross-reference Christmas and cannons focusing the search on Italy. At the castle of St. Angelo in Rome, they fire cannons to signal the beginning of the holy season. The chief has another glitch out, but he's quickly put back together, and Carmen and crew head to Rome for the cannon. But once again, a team from Acme lies in wait, this time led by recurring character Armando Arguella. Mo and Lars panic and send the helicopter off like a rocket with Carmen still hanging from the cannon. Carmen nearly crashes into the side of the castle, but a timely lasso from Armando steadies her swinging. As soon as she's stable, Carmen ditches the rope and makes her escape. But the reaction of the detectives isn't what you think it should be. Yes! Weird. But then, so is Zack and Ivy's next clue. You're skating on thin ice with this case, Carmen. Here's your next clue. Zero, ten, plus cannon, White House? Maybe it's not a zero, but the letter O. O, ten, and... And what if cannon shooting really means the boom? O, ten, and boom? Oh, Tannenbaum! It's what the Germans call a Christmas tree! Ja, das stimmt, Fräulein San Diego. They want us to go to Germany to steal a Christmas tree? Nope. They want me to have the national Christmas tree in Washington, D.C. What a thoughtful gift. However, having encountered two Acme ambushes already, Carmen decides to steal a tree. But not the one they expect. And now she's even stealing my lines! Wait a minute. Yep, still wearing pants. We're good. Carmen instead heads to New York, where she plans to steal the Christmas tree at Rockefeller Center. But much to her surprise, Zack and Ivy are already waiting for her. Dinner! Your home for the holidays is going to be the city jail, Carmen. This Christmas game's not over yet. Bringing the tree home is always my favorite part of Christmas. But again, Zack and Ivy's reaction is not what you think it should be. That Carmen San Diego always has one last move, doesn't she? Well, we have the last move in this game, officer. The chief wasn't feeling well this morning, and when we went back to Acme to check on him, we found Carmen had stolen him. 
She probably figured we wouldn't notice for days on account of Acme shutting down for the Christmas holidays. And I put a secret tracking bug on the gifts so we could follow her to her hideout and retrieve the chief out of her system. Only she never went home. Until now. Clear. C5 us to these coordinates. So the detectives C5 to Carmen's hideout. Mo and Lars panic again and end up entangling themselves in the tree, and Zack manages to restore the chief to normal. Well, as normal as the chief ever is. Zack, man, I had the weirdest dream. I dreamt Carmen was back with Acme, and in you were crooks, and there was a witch, and... Say, where are we? It, it, it was a dream, wasn't it, Andy M? As for Carmen, well... It's Carmen San Diego. Do you really think she's not going to have the last laugh? Not so fast, Ivy. I haven't given you my present. Huh? It's a Carmen doll. The only Carmen you'll catch is this one. Merry Christmas. The only Carmen the only you'll catch is this one. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. The only Carmen you'll catch is this one. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Carmen. Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. And good night, and Merry Christmas to you, Carmen. I love this episode. I honestly rank it as not just one of the best episodes of the series, but one of the best holiday-themed episodes of any TV series. It stays true to the world the show has created, but manages to evoke those warm Christmas feelings any classic Christmas special can. Turning the show's usual format on its head to focus on Carmen rather than the detectives changes things up, while still managing to find ways to incorporate the various Christmas trivia into the show naturally without feeling shoehorned, as well as providing information about international Christmas celebrations that I personally had never heard before. The voice cast is excellent, with Jennifer Hale and Scott Menville playing up the playful teasing that all siblings do in their performances as Zack and Ivy. Roger Bumpus stretches his voice in every conceivable direction as the Chief, as well as knowing when to tone it down as the Chief starts to degenerate. And we would be remiss to not praise Rita Moreno as the voice of the Lady in Red herself. She won a Daytime Emmy for her performance here, and it shows. Carmen's intelligence comes through in her performance, as well as her rare emotional outbursts and snarky comebacks. If you've been curious about this series and are looking for a good introduction, this episode is a great place to start. Although, once again, our friends at Mill Creek have come to our rescue and put the entire series on DVD in their usual no-frills manner. As a production of this video, this DVD set retails for about $8 to $10, depending on where you go. You can get 40 episodes of a great animated series for $10 or less. How can you go wrong with that? Come on. <laughs> Anyway, happy holidays to you all. I'm Dubious Khan. Join me next time for another trip into the Idiot Box. Why is nothing happening? Oh my god, she stole my closing credits. Hang on, don't worry, don't, no problem. I've got emergency backup credits. Yes, I have emergency backup credits. You always gotta be prepared in this game. See you next time. The hell? Okay, if you say so. Yeah, hi, this is Dubious Khan. I'm calling in that favor. Could you put me in contact with Mistorian85, please? Well, she sneaks around the world, funky at